Hello Reiki Temple. Welcome to day four of our five, which have now turned into six days with the inner child and Reiki. Before we go into today's theme, I just wanted to check in with you and ask you how you are and if there has been anything um, that has come up for you in these past few days, either through Reiki or through the journaling questions. Um, or just through being with the day's theme and where would you like to spend more time on and also before going into today just wanted to take a moment to to fully arrive here right now right here so please join me in finding a spot where you can relax and closing your eyes Again, bring the awareness to your breath, allowing it to sink a bit deeper. Maybe making some sound as you exhale, anything that wants to come out with it. Mm. Maybe moving your body a bit, if there's any. Any area of your body that feels like it could do with some jiggling, some wiggling, some wobbling, some shaking, some tensing up and releasing. Anything that wants to happen with your body right now. All right, I feel more space and more presence in my body. Also noticing how simple it can be to, to become more present in my body. It just takes a little bit, ah, a bit of playfulness. Like what wants to happen right now? Don't take it too seriously. You know, we don't need to know why it wants to happen. What's stuck there? Ah, just allowing it ah, to move, to be released. So as you may notice by the the lights it's actually evening here right now so i'm recording this on the evening before before i'm posting this after a day of uh, being active and carrying my baby who is sleeping right now and actually also carrying or catching my older son my four-year-old because we wanted to climb a tree together and he slipped and fell on one of the higher branches it was a very thick branch and uh, he was climbing down and i was on the the branch below it they were you know parallel but one higher and one lower so i was on this one with the baby in the carrier and he was on the the higher one being the monkey that he is so he was walking back and then he slipped and he fell and he was hanging just on his hands like oh and I obviously kind of panicked because I was having the baby in a carry and also walking on the branch and making my way to him. Um, but then still being able to somehow hold him enough to where he could, instead of falling down to the ground, make his way to the branch where I was. And then him being like, I was a monkey, did you see me? No sense of fear, it's like, I was a monkey, that was awesome, let's do it again. I and that is, um, so that's also still my shoulders and wanting to be shaken. But that's also the theme of today, not being a monkey and not slipping and falling, but playfulness and allowing yourself to see the play in everything, um, in everything that you do and, and allowing to feel what, what happens for you when you move with this playful attitude when falling down is not something scary but it's you turning into a monkey or some superhero who hangs by you know the side of a building off a branch and you know how can you invite play into your life right now um yeah you know we as adults or for children it's it's one of the, one of the beautiful characteristics that they have, but it's also often you know, uh, talked about how important play is for children. They learn faster when they're playing. 
know, they're more active when they're playing. There's this natural curiosity that comes in when they're playing. And it comes so naturally. And as adults, we, I'm just speaking as a general population of adults, I'm guessing that a lot of you are not necessarily that, that adulty type. But for those of you who are, you know, it's, it's what happens. It's all of us have probably been there. We have been in this place where there's structure and we are moving through this day and your work and we have to be serious and um, there are certain things are expected from us. So we move, fall into the structure and this type of just being with this work and with the seriousness and kind of rigidity. Um, whereas for adults, actually, playfulness might be just as important and maybe more important than for, for children. Because the same is true for us. We learn faster when we play. It, in, Like I just said, it invites this, this natural sense of curiosity plus Playfulness allows us to see connections that you might otherwise not notice. So it makes us more creative, it makes us more curious, um, and again, it allows this sense of wonder in everything that we do, which again, this is a curiosity that it invites in. It, you know, and through through all this, it brings in this this sense of joy, yeah, even in the everyday. You know, even. Cooking can be this playful event where you talk to your vegetables and you're like, oh, I'm just going to add you a little bit in there. And just having this conversation and make belief. And the beauty about that is also that everything, everything, everything has consciousness. Everything has awareness. You know, there's there's life, life force energy and consciousness in the couch that I'm sitting next to. And the same is the same is for our, our vegetables and and anything that we put into our body it all has a level of consciousness and by interacting with that by infusing that with this playful curiosity that is in the end what comes into the space what comes into the couch what is holding you when you're sitting on it and what is nourishing you when you put it into your body and that's the beauty of being human we are we are also just consciousness just like the couch and just like food but as humans, we've got this creative potential. And one of the ways this creative potential can come out to play is through playfulness. How can we create something new out of something that looks the same and always has been the same? How can this couch some, somehow be something different right now? And I chose this spot for today's video because um, this, this little nook of the house where the couch is and a little table and some stuff over there it was my son's uh, make-believe house when we moved in here so when we would enter this space we were we would have to knock on a make-believe door and he would invite us into our house and right here is his kitchen and this was his couch and he would show us around and just tell us everything that he had here and it really transformed this place into something else it really transformed this this area that was just a couch into an entirely different universe um, and it infused it with more life so how can we invite playfulness into the everyday well it could be through anything and again what sparks joy you know yeah what sparks joy you could be walking by a playground be like, oh, I really want to swing right now. Do it, do it, have fun with it. Or like we, we did today, see a tree that has awesome branches, climb in it. Um, I've got a friend who works for the government and he is just the most giddy and, and fun guy to be around. Um, and in a very serious job where certain things are expected from him, where everyone is coming in in a beautifully nice strict looking suit and a tie and normal socks and shoes and there's a certain expectation of what you look like and act like in there uh, but he's this playful kind of guy and really good at what he does by the way um, so to infuse a bit of joy in his daily life he buys funky socks which are very visible underneath his black suit so he comes in with the 
funky socks and everyone it sparks joy in everyone everyone she's like oh what kind of socks are you wearing today and he feels good walking around in the socks and every step becomes more playful so it, it, it just it, it doesn't take much to invite playfulness into your daily life and also in healing you know healing is it's tough work we go through these purges, we go through all these contractions and it hurts, it hurts, it hurts to, to look and feel you know, all those all those things of the wounded child and, and whatever whatever is there within you. It's serious work and it's tough and it takes courage. But also in there we can, you know see the fun in it and, and realize how even that is not we don't need to take that too seriously go through it and do the work but there too you know the, you can laugh about those purges if you want to you know we at least Bart and I always do that here when, when we go through something really really you know oh, and feel so tense and tight and we're really kind of stuck in it and then somehow by just laughing about it and just laughing at you know the the silliness in of some way and so of our adults um adult mind wanting to make a story out of something by laughing at it it becomes free and it's something that can be transmuted by playing with the contraction it becomes something that we can actually surf through instead of drown in Nothing in life needs to be taken too seriously. It's all just, in a way, just a play and fun. So play with it and see the, see the light and the possibilities in everything. Yeah. Also in his videos, I honestly have no clue what I'm going to say before I start and it just, it's a play of energy. Whatever the energy is moving through me at this time, in the shape of words, play with it, sit with it. I might say something stupid, I might not. It just all happens. And I play with it, play with what comes up and play with what I feel, what my body wants to do, what, what this voice wants to do. And I'm having a lot of fun in the process. It's really such a just pleasure and joy to be doing this with you and to, ah, even just talking about playfulness, I feel this, this bubbly energy. It's moving through my heart and out of my heart and, you know, nothing around here makes sense at this moment and it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Everything is this magical world again. Playfulness infuses us with wonder, infuses the world with wonder. It's wonder, wonderment embodied. It's wonderment in action. You know, it's the next step, the next level. We start with wonderment and the big eyes, and then we start playing with all this wonder that we feel. And through this playing, the wounded child is a little bit less wounded. So yeah, that on playfulness for today. And that's also your, your question for today. How can I, you know, where can I invite more play in my life? Where am I taking life too seriously or taking myself too seriously? And yeah, so that on playfulness. And on Reiki, I received a question of uh, one of you on how we can allow the energy to flow more freely through us. Um, the beauty of Reiki and, and what feels like one of the most important things about Reiki to me is trust. Trust and surrender, just like with life, right? Um, so as I, as I said in, in, the, in the, one of the first videos, for those who have not been attuned to Reiki yet, 
visualize this light coming into your body and into your heart and out of your hands. And all of us, all of us, all of us have the, the ability, the gift of healing. It's not something that's present in some and not in others. We all have the ability to be a channel for this beautiful energy and allow it to create a healing impact in whatever we infuse it, um, you know, whenever we, we give it to. Um, the only, not the only, but one of the big differences between those who are attuned to Reiki and those who are not is that those attuned to Reiki are this permanent channel. It's opened purely for this energy. So we just need to set the intention and point our hands at something and it will already flow. So for those who are not attuned to Reiki yet, um, there is a higher chance of you using your own life force energy when you give it to someone else or when you give a healing to someone else so then the, it's very important to visualize this this energy moving through you um, and the same with yourself but as soon as you have visualized it flowing in really the most important part is trust that it is flowing surrender to what it wants to do we don't do anything as healers there's no real action involved other than being there and moving these hands. But also the, the moving of the hands is not so much of an action. It's an, it's an allowing, an allowing to be moved. And I know I've talked about this in, in other videos. Uh, some of you might have seen that and others, you know, not, but to me, Reiki really feels, or you know, giving a Reiki treatment really feels like a, a beautiful symbol of how we are allowed to move through life. It's just opening ourselves to this energy, setting the intention that this energy moves us and moves through us and creates a healing impact in the person we are healing, whether this is ourselves or someone else. And we cannot give a direction to this energy. We cannot tell it to heal that headache. We cannot tell it to um, now fully integrate our inner child in our lives. We just can be there with the energy and allow it to do what it does best, which is give us exactly what we need to become more aligned with essence, with our essence, with our core. It's this, because it's life force energy, it connects us back to our own life force energy and removes what can be removed at this moment. That's in the way of you being this, this potential that you are. So yeah, in giving yourself these treatments, surrender and trust, trust that it's flowing through you as soon as you have activated it. Trust that it is flowing through you and surrender to whatever it wants to do. So just laying there. I prefer to lay down when I give myself a treatment so I can really sink into it. Just laying there with your hands on your body. And for today, obviously, you're invited to play with where you want to place your hands. It can be, you know, any combination. Allow your, your hands to be playful in this. But yeah, so just playfully placing your hands anywhere in your body and just being with that, allowing them to relax there for a while and trusting whatever it wants to do there and that your and also trusting that your hands are in the right place. We don't need to think about this too much. Not at all really. So just moving your hands as they want to move. And have fun with it. And have fun with the result. Whether it's a contraction or an opening, have fun with results. It's absolutely beautiful and it's exactly the right results for you at this moment. It's perfect, just as it is. So have fun with it. <sighs> and again, now I have no clue what I just said, but I'm... I'm hoping you will have a very playful day and that you will have a lot of fun with the energy 
and with your life today and with whatever wants to come up, especially with your food. Really talk with your foods. They're nice conversations to be had. And the food listens. It really does. So talk with your food. Have those conversations. And again there, just feel what it does in your body when you take that in. Talk with your couch. So, goodbye to you from my son's house within our house. And, oh right, I don't think I said that, but by him, <laughs> by his playing that this was his house, the move was easier for him because he felt at home more quickly because he had created his own house through his play in this house that was such a strange place to him. So yeah, playing ourselves home. Enjoy. <laughs>